after a TCP connection has been established, the client can begin sending a HTTP request. So this is the general format for the HTTP request which starts off with the request line and then there are a number of headers each on a separate line and if there is um, some data to be sent by the client then it's included in the entity body note the entity body and the headers are separated by a blank line this is the carriage return line feed characters so within this um, HTTP request the very first line being the request line indicates the the method that the client is choosing to request for the object so there are different uh, there are a number of uh, methods for instance you have the get method post and head so the get method indicates the server to provide the requested object that is pointed to by this URL so when the server responds to the client the server is going to put the requested web object in the entity body of the HTTP response message post method allows the client to upload data onto the server and the client does so by putting the data loading the data in the entity body the head method is similar to the get method except that the client does not desire the entity the requested object it only is interested in the headers associated with the um, object so you might ask why is this going to be of any use well you might have it depends on the application and you might have an application where you would like to scroll through a um, list of objects and then based on the header value decide to download it eventually so in that case the head method um, comes in handy these are the standard methods that you'll find in HTTP version 1.0 um, with HTTP 1.1 not only do we have all these methods there are a number of other interesting methods that have been proposed for instance there is the connect method that allows the client to initiate a HTTP tunnel through a proxy server you also have put method which uh, enables the client or which tells which enables the client to put the contents of this entity body in a file pointed to by this URL so you can upload files using the put method the delete method allows the um, client to request the server to delete a file pointed to by this URL let's take a look at a real HTTP request message so as you can see in the request line the requested method is get this is followed by the path leading up to the requested object which is index.html and the version that the browser version of HTTP that the browser is running is 1.1 next line identifies the web server on which the resource is located note you can have virtual hosting which allows different domains to be hosted by a web server that's why this header comes in handy in fact these are the only two headers that would suffice to get this page the rest of the headers are quite optional anyway the user agent header here identifies the client to the server and the reason why this is done is because you have a multitude of clients some running on a mobile device others running on your traditional desktop 
and the web server might be having different versions of a website for different clients and therefore if the client identifies itself the web server can serve a more suitable version of the um, page or the requested object or the content to the client the client is more or less identifying its capabilities here it says that it can accept the type of content it can accept HTML or XTML the languages it's accepting even the encoding uh, methods that the client supports one of the interesting uh, headers that you will note here is the connection header and it's currently set to keep alive this request tells the server that the client is requesting for the server to keep the connection alive so that it may request multiple objects within the same connection so fundamentally it's requesting for a persistent connection now whether or not the connection is eventually persistent depends on the server the so server may decide to honor it in which case it will respond back with a keep alive um, option or if it chooses to use the close option it simply indicates that the connection is going to be non-persistent in nature the HTTP response message from the server looks something like this it starts off with the status line and within the status line the very first thing we see is the protocol version and then the status code followed by an explanation about what this code is so status code in this case 200 ok means well things are pretty swell whatever was requested is being is available there, there were no errors and it's being included as part of the entity body um, after the status line you have a couple of headers and again note just as um, we have seen with the HTTP request messages the headers and the data is separated by a blank line so here are a couple of headers um, the server is identifying itself it's even telling the version um, it's running the content length here in this case indicates how many bytes of data are present here so that you know when exactly the response message ends um, in this case you can see the server um, has said that it's willing to keep the connection alive so we can now rest assured that the connection between the client and server is going to be persistent in nature and again these are the content type that the server is supporting um, let's look at the um, one of the important um, components of the status line is of course the status code which is indicative of the um, feedback that the server is um, providing the client so the status code um, is essentially a number it can start it goes from 100 to 500 and so normally numbers beginning with a one let's say status code 100 actually indicates that this client can continue with the rest of the request so status code that begins with one they are informational in nature status code like here as we see in 200 they indicate that things are fine right so 200 okay this is a really nice message that you can receive from the server status codes that begin with 300 they indicate that the client needs to um, carry out some actions in order to fulfill the request so for instance if the ob requested object has moved the server will come back with a 301 status code and will give a redirection URL 
for the client to follow in this case the resource was moved permanently status code beginning with 400 indicates problems with the request on the client side um, some examples are HTTP 400 for instance which means bad request or one of the more popular ones HTTP 404 which means the requested object was not found a status request that begins with 500 signals that for that particular request there are problems on the server side and one of the common um, problems you might get is um, internal server error so these are the status codes which kind of indicates the um, or gives a feedback um, to the client with respect to its uh, initial request